If I'm successful, in a few minutes, you will come to draw inspiration rather than frustration from the most annoying, crappy, day-to-day -day experiences you have. And, ideally, you will never ever call yourself unemployed. Hello, my name is Chris. And my name is Chris because I was born on Christmas. <laughs> which, which means, as a kid, I essentially got ripped off, and, and I knew it. There were a lot of gifts that were sort of double counted, and nobody thought I noticed, but I did. Additionally, I never ever got to give out cupcakes at my school in elementary school. And I never had a birthday party on the day that was actually my birthday. And I thought this was pretty sucky. But it was summed up when I was about your age in a single card, just two words on, you got it, one present. Yep, take it in. I, I, I winced too. I was like, ugh, it just got me. It summed up years of frustration. But the good news is, with a little optimism and you know, creativity, I found that those two words have been reclaimed. I love that my birthday is on Christmas. Uh, in fact, I find that I tell this story and everybody remembers not only my name, but my birthday. <laughs> Even better than that, while many of my friends and colleagues find themselves you know, lost in some cubicle forgotten on their birthday, I always, every year, find myself on a holiday, on vacation with the folks I love most, surrounded by them, celebrating me. So that's pretty cool. Um, so merry birthday. Um, and when I'm not celebrating my holiday, I find myself very, very lucky also. I work at a really neat place called IDEO uh, with some of the most amazing people I've ever met who inspire me and uh, do really creative things on a daily basis. Uh, IDEO has a long track record of innovating and working with clients to develop new products and services. I assure you, you've used many of them. Uh, they range wildly from, uh, you know, pumps for irrigation in rural Africa to, you know, kitchen tools for inspired yuppies in North America. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, so with that experience and that perspective, I thought about what, what could I possibly bring to this group today? And I knew that I'd want to reach way back to the embarrassing moments where I was still getting over my birthday and pull some stories that m might be informative to you. When, when the lessons that I now believe in convincingly because of my everyday uh, professional experience were just beginning to reveal themselves to me. And because that Merry Birthday card stuck with me so painfully, so impactfully, I thought I'd rip off the methodology and send you some cards. The first... Suckiness is opportunity. And this is something I really believe. Let me explain. Uh, there are a lot of you know, misconceptions around how inven invention or innovation happen. One of those is that a light bulb sort of appears over your head and you've got the idea. In my experience, innovation and invention typically happen over a longer process that's more deliberate and frequently starts with a really crappy experience with a product or service. That crappy experience is the spark to innovation. So let me get personal now. When I was 19 and still a student, I was walking through Safeway and kind of noted that these shopping baskets were pretty junky. I was really sort of impressed with their lameness. And <laughs> rather than just sort of move on as, as we all do, because I know you all have crappy experiences every day, I decided to dwell. And that's what I'm here to tell you today. Next time you bump into something sucky, embrace its suckiness. Lean into its suckiness. Obsess over every detail of its suckiness. Notice how the handles pinch your hand and bump against the basket bumps painfully against your leg or how people struggle to hold these things and their elbows are twisted and whatnot. Whatever the sucky experience it is, study it. Lean into it. Because it'll be the key. Those little insights will be the key to a, an adventure you may choose to have around invention. I went on to prototype my ideas, including this one, the final model that I went to the same safe way to test with people I've never met before. So this guy, Gene, really liked the way the flexing bumper made its basket soft against his leg and how the handle was now oriented like a briefcase that was more natural and allowed him to maneuver the store more comfortably. I went on to continue using the things I was now learning in school to, to create a production design and gather interest in my new invention. I filed patents and also eventually had the product come to market. Here it is in all its glory. It's just a shopping basket, but it was, I think, the first one designed for a person rather than just merchandise. It was contoured to fit the body, the handle was oriented differently, it still afforded stacking, but in a totally different way, 
was more recyclable and held all the things it needed to hold without them sliding around. Um, it's not the most sexy thing ever, I know, but it was, <laughs> it was my first project, and it taught me a lot of lessons, including the one that suckiness is a gift. And I still get pictures from friends who see it all over the world and uh, an occasional royalty check more than 15 years later. So let crappy be your muse. So one more card for your birthday present. Bust the myth of experience. Another thing that frustrated me when I was younger, I wanted to work in the sporting goods industry. I thought that'd be really cool. But of course, I didn't know how to get any experience because the paradox. Everyone says, well, you can't have the job unless you have experience. And you can't really get experience without a job, I thought. But instead, having learned from the basket to lean into crappiness, I sought crappiness in sporting goods, and I found it abundant. And so looking at the handheld pumps for inflating balls, I decided I could do better. They were awkward and clumsy to use, needles broke, you couldn't let air out of the ball easily. And I got to a prototype that really showed promise. This was using a sphygmometer bulb, you know, the thing to do blood pressure. And it inflated a ball wonderfully. And so I kept prototyping, tried all kinds of different features, and came to this design, which I started talking to companies about in the sporting goods industry, all sorts of neat companies that I would have dreamed about working at. The needle folds under to kind of protect it when you have it in your pocket or your gym bag. The top has these little uh, inverting divots that kind of give you a quick pressure gauge to tell you when you hit regulation pressures for different sports. But then something sucky happened. While I was in the middle of my negotiations, this appeared in a, a magazine. Someone else was now selling something that looked a lot like my early prototypes. I winced again, kind of like when I got that card. But the good news is I followed up with all the folks I had been negotiating with, and all of them asked me if I'd be interested in a job, and maybe I should submit a resume. Suddenly, I had experience. And I proudly wrote my first resume, listing myself as an independent inventor. <laughs> so to conclude, some lessons I hope you take forth from here is that suckiness is an opportunity. Let the next thing that one of your friends say sucks be a source of inspiration. Let it cue the inventor in you. Bust the myth of experience. You can wait around for others to give you experience, or you can go out and get it. I say go out and get it, and never ever call yourself unemployed. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.